This week, our characters get new powers and make new friends. Let's hope everything is on the level. Deity Mike! Does anyone need a reminder of anything before we get started? Any questions? Yeah, what the fuck's going on? No, I'm just... No, I'm just... <laughs> Can we take ibuprofen? <laughs> <laughs> like, in character? In, it's, I think it's important for us to, to decide on this beforehand. Are in character or out of character, are we taking ibuprofen? That's a big deal. <laughs> We're not clear. I mean, I am. <laughs> There's a thing called Rangavanvedet. We're taking that now, apparently. That's okay. the whole thing. I, just, I mean, I can't take it anyway. So you know what? It doesn't really <laughs> matter. As soon as you return from your journey to Sea Crash, Blade gathers you all in the common room of the inn. Gentlemen, lady, and bird, well done on your work in Sea Crash. My sources in the city tell me that you caused um, quite the commotion. Uh, for the second part of the wand, you're headed to the city of Rhodes. It's a nice enough town if you can manage not to cross the locals. Their way of life is, mm, let's just say, peculiar. Hold on a second. Are you telling us not to cross the roads? <laughs> is, that, is that really what just happened? Because I feel like that's what just happened. All is right, it Rhodes like R-H-O-D-E-S or like R-O-A-D-S? Like mm. Rhodes? Uh, that's this. It's the first one. So my contact there will meet you, but please... Please, for the love of gods, watch your mouths. I'll give you a couple of days to sort out your things here, and we should probably go visit Gary first. He's got, well, he's doing a whole new thing now, and um, let's just say you're all going to need time to heal from it. What? That sounds super suspicious. Can you explain that further? Once again, you make your way okay. into the sewers. Oh, all right, right, well then. <laughs> and once again, you spy an earthen hut. I'd like to roll for wall. insight on God explaining what that just meant. <laughs> you don't know. That's Blade. You can roll an insight check on what he just meant. Oh, Blade is talking, not e Eli the Dungeon Master is talking. That's right. I would like to roll insight on Blade. Do it. All right. I'm doing it. And 16er. Yeah, he's absolutely not telling you something. Okay, well, do Great I not get to like have him... Was... Tell me Insight now. isn't mind reading. Did you want to know what he... <laughs> I'd like did to you roll for mind reading. What he, <laughs> that's, unfortunately, that's not a role you have yet. Uh, 18 mind read. Oh, all right. He doesn't like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you got. Yeah, I, I, he, you read his mind and it's like, I was specifically talking to him when I said the wash your mouth thing. That's exactly, exactly. what it was. His mind you says, found fuck your face. Moving <laughs> on. <laughs> you did it. Once again, you make your way into the sewers beneath the city, and once again, you spy an earthen hut against the wall of a large chamber. However, the sign outside no longer says Gary's magic stuff. The previous lettering has been painted over with large red letters that say Gary's Badass Tattoo Parlor. Uh, yeah. Oh, no. Nice. Inside, the swords, potions, and baubles have been replaced with sleek wood and smooth leather tattoo chairs. Even Gary seems to have gotten into the spirit of his new shop, having stitched together several large animal hides to make himself what he obviously considers to be a biker vest. You walk in, Gary turns and says, Hi guys, um, nice to meet you for the very first time. Wink! Hello! That's weird. All right, I'll play along assuming you can cover this name up I still got on my who, ass. Who are we <laughs> Can I get a tattoo? There, like somebody on a camera? What's happening? Can we all get tattoos? Uh, no, Gary, you have met them. Uh, how many times? Uh, just the once, Gary, just the once. Oh, so you guys are here for some badass ink? Yep. Well, take a look at the book Ooh. and tell me what you like the look of. Okay. And with that, he throws you a book filled with symbols of animals, regular like lettering and strange images you don't recognize. I would like each of you to choose one. 
So I'm dropping this into our Zencaster chat right now. You can see all the symbols and pictures that are available. These are what's known as magical tattoos. They're all good, but some of them are better than others. So you're going to choose an image, and then I'm going to look up and see... Uh... I call Dave's patron Gladys. <laughs> <laughs> no, what? You can't have my patron. I don't even understand what that means. What do you mean you're just taking did, my patron? Just did. Oh, that's amazing. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. Ooh. What is a drift globe? Yeah, what's a make something up immediately? <laughs> what are you guys <laughs> looking at that you see stuff? So the chat at the bottom <laughs> of the of the Zencaster thing. Oh, so okay. I was like, like what link? drift globe? How do <laughs> what are you seeing? Okay, so here's what I was gonna say about make something up. I will let you guys just randomly decide what you want a picture of, and I will make something up. So that's tattoo of your choice, and I'll fucking make something up immediately. But you got to take it. You can't be like, no, nah, I did it again. <laughs> and then a drift globe, to answer that question, is a magic item. It's a sphere of thick glass that weighs one pound. If you're within 60 feet of it... Okay, it's a tattoo of something that weighs one pound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. It can emanate light or the daylight spell. Okay, all right. So it's like a, a globe that would follow a wizard around. Exactly. Okay. And you also have a peace sign written in here. Um, but not as in peace as in lack of conflict. <laughs> you have... <laughs> <laughs> like a shard, like so. I'm just curious: is this a sign of a shard of some this is, sort, or this is, is that a, just the glyph of the morsel? It's very important. <laughs> it's a, it's a peace sign. Also, and and this is this is very important. You have a pack of wolves howling at the moon. I'd like to know how many wolves. <laughs> Three. <laughs> all right. Well, then that's three what I'm wolves. taking. God damn it. I'm Pack taking right. th three wolf moon tattoo. <laughs> three wolf moon tattoo. Excellent. So <laughs> do we get to choose where we're putting the tattoo? <laughs> yes. Tramp stamp. Got it. Okay. Tramp stamp. Love it. I have a name I want to cover up on my butt cheek. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Dave, what are you going with? Oh, man. I didn't get to read all of it yet. I'm a slow, take, take your time. Slow take your time. None of it is... No, there's, this can I, all get cut. I have okay. a question. Yes. I'm a male, right? Uh, Sure. Yes. So I, so I have yeah. balls? Uh, Do birds have balls? Well, this is important. <laughs> I don't think birds have balls. Okay. Let me see. I feel so like I've birds. seen bird balls, right? Like, I've seen a lot of birds. I've never seen bird balls. Now, You're wait, not looking closely do enough. Do we know what, what like, type <laughs> of bird you are? An era cocra, but we don't know what the fuck that means. So could you be like a duck? Do you have like one of those weird duck torque screw penis things? Ooh, that's a good question. Do ducks have balls? I think the answer is you definitely don't have balls. You definitely do, even more importantly, have a corkscrew penis. That needs yes, to be canned. Absolutely. I've absolutely. never heard of duck corkscrew penis, but now that you is have. unfortunate. You need to look that You shit need up. to look down. That's real, man. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> you need to look now you know down. about it. There it is. <laughs> you need to cartwheel your ass into a glory hole, sir, is what you need to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have been so oh. you do have testicles. <laughs> yeah, they're there internal. It there it is. So right. you can't internal get your testicles. tattoo on your testicles. They're external internal. corkscrew dick, though. That's official. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, man. Yep. Okay. All right. I've decided. Oh, should I get the picture of Gary? Uh, is that a choice, you or are you that's just a choice? That's a okay. choice. Picture of Gary. Wait, I, that's what right. I was about to get. Oh, no, you get it. You get it. You get it. Then. You could both get it. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. No, no, you no, you no, do no, the picture no, of Gary. No, no, no. no, no. I, I was we about could to all get no, Gary. No, no. I, <laughs> would, I would never, I would never deign to take your tattoo ideas away from you. Go for it. I, you know I, what? I, I don't I, want I, it now. I brush, I wash my hands of this No, scenario. no, fine. Now neither one of us gets a picture of Gary. No. See, no. now I feel like y'all should both get that best friends forever tattoo together. Yeah. Absolutely not. Is there a Best Friends Forever tattoo? Hey, Gary, what if we all get a tattoo of you? Gary, are you there? Oh, hey! <laughs> yeah, there he is. Man, was just... You, just, you were just like staring silently for a while there. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to get a clean edit. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what? Wow. If you all got the same tattoo of me, I would be so great. I mean, as long as I hadn't designed a whole tattoo system of magic <laughs> I... for... 
a Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> podcast. I mean, that would be crushing I, if I had done that. But I'm just an elemental who has a tattoo book, so no skin off my not nose. Nah, I, I, I think we should. There's some, there's some beautiful artwork in the here, Gary. I, I'm very excited to get something else. In fact, all right. So, Cloud, you're getting a picture of Gladys, right? No, I'm gonna go with no. the shadow okay. with shadow with no one to cast it. All right, let me just look elsewhere on my fucking notes. Then, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, this is the mark of the shadow. A veil of shadows and silence radiates from you, masking you from detection. Once per long rest, the wearer may cast Pass Without a Trace, targeting themselves only. Didn't he already have the basically the ability yeah, to do that? Yep. Well, actually, I think with the... Let me just check that the level up didn't already give me that. I think you literally already got that. With in, which case, in which case, we're going to go ahead and give you backsies on that, because that's okay. bad radio. <laughs> Oh, looks like your tattoo fucking sucks. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> How was the D&D podcast this month? I don't know. Kind of lame. They got powers they already had. Pick a different tattoo. <laughs> uh, somebody else go. I, I've, decided I on my, I've decided on my tattoo. All right, but I just want to recommend one right here. If you got a flock of birds, everybody would think it was an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's pretty fucking sweet. Let's not throw that out there. I, uh, I, the bird orgy sounds pretty excellent, but I uh, know I've chosen. I would like to go for the Ghostbusters logo. Yeah. Oh, all right. Let me. That's. What the hell does that have to do with that? the Ghostbusters? That's the the blues. Were you going for? Yeah, mine was actually closer to the notes of the, the actual the thing. Bad, the, 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 the bad what? I was doing that with a southern accent, damn it. That's hard to do. <laughs> All right. You have the mark of the spirit master. Nice. A necromantic energy ripples through your mark, extending long, smoky tendrils towards the undead. The tendrils constrict the spirit, overriding their will with yours. As an action, the wearer chooses one incorporeal undead entity within 60 feet. The target must succeed on a charisma saving throw or become charmed by the wearer for one hour. Saving throw is equal to eight plus wearer's proficiency bonus plus wearer's charisma modifier. If the target has an intelligence of eight or higher, it has advantage on the saving throw. If the creature is not currently controlled, the wearer gains control over the creature. The tattoo may be activated once per short or long rest. Cool. Um, TLDR, can you say it in like one quick sentence, what I just got? <laughs> you can control the minds of anything undead, pretty nice. much. You have to let us encounter undead stuff. I know you're going to just like get rid of that now, so I don't get to use this. You have to let us... Just hear me deleting graveyard fight <laughs> from my <laughs> Google Drive. You know what? That looks pretty sweet. Thank All you. right, who's up next? Well, I already decided on mine. I'm going to go with the three wolf moon tattoo on my butt cheek, so I'll go up. All right. Nice. That would be Mark of the Pack Master. A pack of wolves leap from your tattoo. The ink design... <laughs> Oh, I'm now so taking... happy. Wolves from the ass is a power I have. I, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm only going to use this while I'm doing backflips from now on. <laughs> awesome. Wait, so, so you're, you're tattooing that on your butthole is what you're saying. Well, it's going to be on my butt cheek, but nobody's going to know, right? Because it's going to be on my left butt cheek. I'll make sure that I'm always kind of showing the right butt cheek when I use the power. Yeah, they'll get stuck in your pants otherwise. Three, yeah, right. three wolves are going to just come out of your butt. I love that. <laughs> yeah, so once per long rest, <laughs> oh. the wearer may use an action to activate the tattoo's power, causing 1d4 plus 1 wolves of the same color as depicted in the tattoo to appear within 5 feet of the wearer. These wolves persist until killed or until 10 minutes have passed, at which point they disappear into smoke. The wolves follow the wearer's every mental command and act on the wearer's initiative. Any article of clothing which covers the tattoo upon activation <laughs> is destroyed... <laughs> In the process, <laughs> as the wolves leap through the cloth, oh, no. if the tattoo is covered by armor, the tattoo will not activate. Oh, uh, Snedrick's <laughs> just going to wear fucking leather oh. chaps for the whole quest <laughs> so nothing happens with his pants. All right. All G-strings all the time. All right. Got it. <laughs> oh, my God. We should go back to the dwarf village with 
with you with no pants on that would scare the hell out of everybody. <laughs> All right. That's a pretty cool power and a pretty <laughs> unfortunate location. I'm going to be honest with you. I probably should have given you a heads up about that, but that's our Gary. <laughs> So I'm trying to get my own spinoff podcast going. Yeah, no, I get Maybe it. people I get would it. like to do kind of like a Q&A thing. Is what I, I'll talk to you guys about it later. Who's next? Who's next? Uh, I think I'd like the bear. All right. Bear. Spirit of the bear. Okay, this is the spirit of the bear. Do you feel blessed with the endurance of a bear? The wearer's constitution score is increased... By one. Oh, lovely. Mm-hmm. Excellent. I'm going to get that on my bicep. Nice. Excellent. In honor of the stock market. <laughs> 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 okay, pretty standard, pretty standard, pretty cool. Uh, that just leaves you, Claw. What are you thinking? I'm going to get the fist wreathed in flame, ice, rock, and wind. Oh, I was hoping you would. Can I get it on my eyeball? On your eyeball. Will what? that work with the power? Uh, Are... no. Okay. <laughs> then can I get it as like a replacement for one of my fists? You can tattoo it on your fist, on your on your bird wing. I think you should just tattoo wing. his eyeball because he asked for it and just see how it goes. <laughs> I don't want like a sticker of a fist on the back of my hand. Can you make it so that it like looks like my fist is wreathed in flame? No, that's rocking. not what tattoos are. <laughs> yeah, but you can like <laughs> cover my fist in flame, ice, rock, and wind, right? Are you okay, uh, Claw? Do you know what do you need is? Some Have you ever seen uh, someone draw on a thing before? I'm not talking 3D. At... I'm not talking 3D. I'm saying you could just put like flame, ice, rock, and wind like around my hand, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that will be in three dimensions. All right. So that is, this is the fist of the elements. Your fist is wreathed in pure natural energy, channeling the power of the elemental planes. Lightning ripples through your arm as it barrels towards your opponents with the force of a tsunami. So, as an action, the wearer may read their fist in elemental energy of a type chosen when the tattoo is first applied. So, pick a good one. The wearer's unarmed strikes are considered magical and deal an extra 1d6 plus 1 damage of the chosen elemental type. If the fist deals fire damage and targets a flammable object... That is not being worn or carried. The target catches fire. Against plant-based creatures, the fist deals two more points of damage. If the fist deals lightning damage and targets a creature wearing metal armor, where it makes the attack or roll with advantage. This also applies against targets made completely out of metal. If you deal cold damage, fire-based creatures take an additional two points of cold damage. When the wearer activates this tattoo, the effect persists for one hour or until dispelled. Well, shite. I don't think you're ever going to use that because uh, it'll burn up anybody's clothing you're trying to take off. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a positive. <laughs> Everybody wins. <laughs> All right. So Gary applies the final tattoo and says, Wow, you guys look so much more badass. Don't forget to leave us five stars when you yelp. Yelp, yelp with people about five stars. This one doesn't really work. Thanks, thanks for coming. Bye. Gary's weird. <laughs> Gary's really weird. Well, I have, I am five liable stars, to have five stars. Sorry, he wolves. told us to do a thing while we're outside. everybody just wanted to drop in to thank you so much for listening to the show this has been a ton of fun for us to make and we're so glad that it's almost as fun for you to listen to if you like the show why not share it with your friends uh, put it on twitter put it on facebook burn it onto a cd and mail it to someone who doesn't have the internet but does have a disc man uh, if you love the show why not sign up to support us at patreon.com forward slash d and d minus all spelled out that's patreon.com forward slash d and d minus we've got a dungeon masters ask me anything on there we've got our first small game on there the worst and the dimmest which is us playing the really really fun game lasers and feelings 
And if you're a Dungeon Master level patron who actually gets to contribute stuff to the game itself, I have gathered up all the stuff I've made, my notes and the objects and the magical stuff that I've found around the internet, and I'm going to put that all onto a big mega file for our Dungeon Master level patrons because people have been asking, where can I find this or where did I get the idea for that? So if you're interested in that stuff, why not up your patronage to Dungeon Master level patron and then you will have that stuff. Our next episode comes out the first Friday in July, which is Friday, July 3rd, is when I'm going to try and get this out to you. So talk to you then. You're up first. Ooh, I get one this time. Bridget, as will surprise nobody, you spend your time off putting things in order. You've got a bar in one of the busiest cities in the realm to run, and run it you do. You hire staff and get your first slow trickle of patrons, but people like what you brew, and soon you have your first regulars. You start to develop a reputation as a nice, quiet place for a drink where the dwarven lady bartender is happy to rumble with any troublemakers. In fact, it's on one of your busiest nights as you're cleaning up the bar that you hear muffled raised voices from inside Blade Vigil's room. Because we have no idea how powerful it's going to get. Well, then all the more reason for it to be in the right hands, you know. The right hands? Ha! You heard the rumors. Hell, even by their own accord, that group is little more than a well-funded band of bandits. You think when they have the full power of the wand at their disposal, they won't use it for their own gain? Be realistic. I don't, I mean, sure, sure, they are rough around the edges, but I think there's, there's much good in them. I think they'll surprise you, Blade Vigil. Nobody surprises me, Floon. That's why I'm still alive. Now, whether or not you plan to go upstairs and speak to Blade and Floon is irrelevant, because you are distracted by a loud click in the corner. The seven-chested dresser, which has remained firmly shut and unbudgeable the entire time you were home's second drawer has popped open. Inside is a plain brass key and a note that says, Bridget, I wish I didn't have to say it, but you'll need this. Grandpapa. Well then, I think I'm going to take that key and uh, start looking for locks that might, it <laughs> might fit. <laughs> and shoving it in stuff. Shoving it in stuff. <laughs> Kla, you're relaxing in your quarters a couple days later when you hear a gentle knock on the door. It's Blade, and he says, uh, Kla, uh, can I come in for a minute? You and I, we need to talk. Can I leap out the window? <laughs> please, please, please let him leap out the window. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Okay. Roll it. Ooh, 20. This will be, uh, you rolled a natural 20? No, no, no. I'm asking if it's a d20. It's oh, yeah, roll a Under roll what a circumstances would he not be like, what would happen if he rolls a zero right now? He, like, <laughs> smashes into the window and if bounces back? If he rolls back. a zero on a d20, <laughs> what happens is what you're asking? It's, the world implodes. That's yeah, the world right? Implodes. Yeah. We have so much bigger problems than what Morgan's character does. <laughs> I have zeros on a couple of these die. Yeah, on your tens. I did roll a natural 20. <laughs> you did roll a natural <laughs> 20. That is... With a grace unrecognizable to anyone who knows you, you die, you leap through the window and soar out onto the lower roof, shimmy your way down into the thing and outside the bar where Blade Vigil is waiting for you. <laughs> Solid. Uh, look, this is kind of what I'm talking about. I I've been talking to the others and it seems that you have a bit of a, how do I put this, sticky fingers problem? Uh, impulse control problem? I mean, over the last two missions with your share of the prizes, you've accumulated no small amount of money. What's with the uh, kleptomania and to a more uh, important extent, jumping out of windows? Can I reach the window again and jump back in? <laughs> jump back in. <laughs> yep, go Make ahead. Make him roll for it. 
<laughs> yep. Go ahead and roll that dice. Oh, five. <laughs> you, <laughs> you start to jump up and Blade catches you by the leg and sort of holds you back down and he goes, okay, okay, uh, I understand. You're not interested in conversation. Look, if you're going to keep this up and gods, it really seems like you are, you might as well be good at it. I got someone I'd like you to meet. Pack your bags. We're going to be gone for a couple of days. We leave in the morning. I don't own anything, so let's go. Fantastic. <laughs> so All these things I steal, I just throw away immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so you set off, trekking through the hills outside of the city for almost a day until you come upon a nondescript farmhouse that you honestly wouldn't have noticed if Blade hadn't walked you up to it. Outside is a simple wooden sign that reads, Brotherhood of the Way of the Shadow. Warning, trespassers will be taught on sight. <laughs> Inside the dusty single room of the farmhouse, Blade turns to you and says, Well, I'll leave you with Alex, named for patron Alex Simpson. Thank you, Alex. And turns to walk out the door, except his way is blocked by a gray-faced farm boy who, now that you think about it, was actually outside in the yard the whole time. You just didn't really pay him any mind. He turns to you and he says, Well, thanks, Blade. Hey, I'm Alex. You ready to begin your training? Sure. I was so sure you were about to jump through something. I thought you were going to jump out so the window. So disappointed. I thought about using my new tattoo, but I'll, I'll save it. I dive into <laughs> a rabbit elemental. hole. Just light them on I fire. I burn the barn house down. <laughs> Snedrick, you spend your time off studying divination in the Poff Library, relaxing and talking with the others. As a forest gnome, you never really seen this amount of money, let alone had it. So you're enjoying dining out at restaurants for the first time and replacing the tattered clothes you've been wearing for years with some slightly finer, some might even say fashionable ones. Nothing too fancy, just... Well, yeah, because I'm going to have... Wolves jumping out of it. I don't want to spend <laughs> exactly. Much on it. Yeah. Yes, you know, so, uh, assless chaps or <laughs> an Armani chaps. suit with assless chaps. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Any any show outfit Eli has ever worn. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. One day, as you're studying in the library, <laughs> Floon approaches you. Uh, Snedrick, my boy, how how good the studies? I, well, I'm learning a bunch of new stuff about. Ass wolves. I gotta be honest with you. I've had this tattoo for a while now, and I'm I'm dying to use it, but I'm I'm kind of afraid to too. Yeah, I understand. That's good. That's good. He seems a little bit distracted. Listen, uh, Snedrick, there's something I need to speak to you about. It's um, it's the wand. As its parts join together, you know, it will grow stronger and stronger. I I, I know you're trustworthy. Wait, I'm, I'm that, sorry. But... I'm sorry. If if this is a birds and the bees talk, I I know how all the parts work. No, no, the wand. Oh, 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 the what, seven, se, uh, seven parts. I got one you. Seven, I, yes, I, no, I'm sorry. I, so sorry. So sorry. I don't know why every time I have a conversation with any of you. It, it, look, it's, it's, it's not <laughs> I know you're trustworthy, <laughs> but do be careful, Snedrick. If there's one thing I've always said about you, it's that you can take a great load. A great big load, Snedrick. <laughs> I, I'm not taking the bait. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, it's just that, you know, if someone needs to take it up, that's what I always say. Snedrick is the one. He'll take it right up, no matter how thick and veiny the circumstance. <laughs> Anyways, be careful with your new wand and all that. And he uh, wanders out of the Puff Library, unaware of what he has just said. And now your <laughs> wand uh, also performs an extra spell. Snow Simnox Snowball Storm. Which we both... Snillox, Snillox Snowball Swarm. Yeah, which we'll learn about the first time you use it. However, the strangest part of your break doesn't take place during the day. It takes place during your dreams. As a student of divination, you know it's only a matter of time until prophecy sneaks into your life. Sorry, I'm sorry, Eli. I know you've got a whole thing you're trying to do here, but who fucks who would you tell me about my dream? <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> what even happens here. <laughs> this is this is the Dungeons and Dragons versions of Go Fuck Yourself. Okay, all right, that's what I thought. I was pretty sure I was supposed to jerk off through half of this or something, but I didn't know who I was supposed to but jerk on, off. On you to know? Eli. Okay. Oh, Look, all right, all right. I got it now. <laughs> in these difficult times, if people are jerking off to our Dungeons & Dragons podcast, we're doing some good, and that's all that matters. 
So, look, some <laughs> divination wizards get a headache when it's about to rain. Certain lucky ones get incredibly good at games of cards or dice. But a few nights into your stay at the inn, you have a dream. And in your dream, you're staring at the largest face you've ever seen. It's the size of a mountain. It has spots of flesh and spots that appear to be stone or wood. Sarah Huckabee Sanders? <laughs> <laughs> Is it you? But when you look into the eyes, thick black liquid spills down the face like tears. This massive, towering face turns to you and says, Help. And then you wake up. It is Sarah Huckabee Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't because I'm sure I'm actually going to help her. <laughs> Dave, much to your surprise, you didn't hear from Gladys when you got home. As the others studied and worked, as your tattoo healed, your mirror remained just that. A mirror. So you didn't even bother checking the day of your departure, but as you put your hand on the knob to walk out the door, a familiar voice says, Absolutely not! Oh, hey, hey, hey Gladys. What, what's up? Gladys stands looking very peeved, arms crossed in the mirror. Oh, I mean, you look like a bouncer at a Buffalo Wild Wings. Do, I mean, do those even exist here? It doesn't matter. No servant of mine is going to look like they didn't make the casting for I Love New York Season 3. She snaps her fingers, <laughs> and your frosted tips and Ed Hardy t-shirt-shaped burn disappear off of your body. <laughs> I forgot I had that sweet getup going. <laughs> Wait, no, it's gone? Yeah, it's gone. Gladys just took them off you. Ah, <sighs> Whatever. Love those frosted <laughs> tips. What do you Listen, want, Gladys? Kid, oh, it's been hell down below, both literally and figuratively. Rumor of the Queen of Chaos's return has turned the whole realm upside down. I mean, she's an old one and powerful, and there's plenty of folk down there who don't exactly have a warm welcome waiting for them if she makes it back. Look, kid, b before you go, your work has been... Mm, how do I say this? Pretty amazing. Not good. What? Let's <laughs> say, okay. Well, okay, it doesn't matter. Here's what I think you need. I think you need a helper. An assistant, if you will. Someone in my employ who can uh, keep an eye on you. Or, you know, out for you. Yeah, I, I think I know just the guy. And with that, she pulls from inside her furs a thin golden chain. She wraps it tightly around your wrist where it glows brightly and then vanishes. It's just gone. As it does, a chain of red fire forms a circle in the center of the room. It glows and burns brighter and brighter until the flames of the circle almost reach the ceiling. As the flames flicker lower, you see a figure standing in the circle with a snub nose, a set of wings, <laughs> a silver horn. As the flames go out entirely, the figure turns to you and says, Hi, I'm called a bug of pick a <gasps> Yes. What? Fuck yeah! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm so I got a call. happy. <laughs> oh, I'm so She has been pushing forward through the endless night for who knows how long. It could be days, months, years, or millennia. She does not know. She only knows she must keep moving. She does not sleep or rest, for to do so would be to give in to the mighty winds, pushing her back into infinity. So she has continued forward. Sometimes walking, sometimes crawling, until she sees it. Against the horizon, a thin, white speck, an almost invisible ray of light radiating from one side, a ray of darkness from the other. 
She is moving forward. She will reach her destination. And when she does, she will be avenged. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.